Video games are often wild. A lot of the time there's some violence, and a lot of the times there's some sexy. And those things aren't bad at all. In fact, those things are good. I enjoy them. But sometimes they hide away something that's just so incredibly innocent and clean. It just gives you the warm feelings inside. And we're we're in that season, right? Hi folks, it's Falcon. Today on Game Ranks, 10 of the most wholesome Easter eggs in video games. Starting off with number 10, God of War Ragnarok. Now, this is a dark and a violent game, but God of War Ragnarok has quite a few wholesome, heartwarming moments that can kind of catch you off guard. I could talk about all that stuff endlessly here, but I think I want to focus on just one particular side quest that's got a little bit more going on behind the scenes. When you finally get back to Midgard, you can find this mysterious rainbow campfire which triggers this quest across the realms. And to complete that, you need to thoroughly explore the world and find four ingredients that are needed for a special recipe that gives you a permanent stat boost. What did you find? A list of provisions needed to prepare a meal. A recipe? You left that way out here. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Perhaps the recipe will lead us to them. It's a little bit obscure, but it's a pretty useful quest to complete. And while the actual in-game reason for all this is left pretty vague, there's actually a lot more going on, according to San Hendrick, a senior gameplay programmer from Santa Monica Studio, the developers of Ragnarok. He writes at length about the development process of this entire quest, how it started as something small between him and his partner Jack Snipes. Originally, it was just going to be a little heart or something like that, but after Jake's tragic death in 2020, the development team decided to include something bigger as a memorial for him in the game, and that's where this entire quest comes in. Uh, if you want to know more, check out Sam's thread about it. It's it's touching. It's like a sweet little quest regardless of context, but knowing more about the background makes it more powerful. It's tragic, but also really wholesome. And number nine is Hitman 3. Um, these games are the last place I'd expect to find a genuine wholesome moment, but for whatever reason, IO Interactive snuck this little secret scene in. It's pretty easy to miss. Um, at the end of the end of an era mission, it's your standard Hitman operation. You're in an exotic location hunting down two rich jerks. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. Um, on the edge of the map, there's an NPC leaning against a railing, and beside them is one of those blend-in prompts, which are normally just there to help you avoid detection, but this one's a little different. When you stand there, the NPC actually starts talking to 47, asking if he's seen someone. What follows is an understated little conversation where the hitman uh, reassures someone who's meeting a friend after not having seen them for a long time. I'm kind of scared she's outgoing me. Like, maybe she's changing, but I'm just staying the same. I'm just, I don't know, dead weight. She agreed to meet you in the middle of the night, in the rain. No one does that if they don't care. She's nervous and worried that the friend bailed, but 47 is positive and reassuring. The series has been going on a long time, and Agent 47 has never really been anything but a robotic killing machine. Uh, with the world of Assassination Trilogy, they added a lot of dry humor to the character, but this is one of the few moments we've seen him just talk to another person like a human being, and it's weirdly wholesome and entirely unexpected. And number eight is the Talos Principle 2. Now, at the start of this game, you're given the option of exploring the city of New Jerusalem or just running forward and getting straight into puzzles. If the Steam achievements are anything to go by, it seems like most players just elected to get into the meat of the game right away. But if you did that, you're missing out. The city isn't just beautiful and surprisingly big, it's also filled with backstory and characters to talk to that are all as surprisingly well written as the rest of the game. Along with many pavilions and exhibits, easily the most touching area is the area that's just a memorial dedicated to cats. It's an in-game memorial, but the cat pictures are clearly real and the messages left with them are so heartfelt and real that they seem authentic. Nearby is an NPC you can talk to who tells you about having a pet and how it makes them feel and their favorite thing about cats. I think the most amazing fact about cats is that they self-domesticate it. Which is another way of saying that <laughs> they're not properly domesticated at all. They just showed up one day and decided to start living with our ancestors. It's all very touching, somehow made even more effective by the fact that all these characters are robots. Even if you're not a cat person, it's hard to go through this exhibit and not get a little choked up. Anyone with a pet can relate to it. It's just an extremely wholesome, lovely little section of the game. 
And number seven is Alan Wake 2. Now, for the most part, this isn't a very wholesome game. A lot of sympathetic characters from the first game either met a grisly fate between games, 13 years, long time, or they're revealed to be much darker characters than you first thought. Bright Falls has become a pretty miserable, unpleasant place. There's a few bright spots, but it's mostly looking eh, grim. So when you start finding signs and ads for a mysterious mayor setter who is looking for re-election, all anyone can do is assume the worst. Uh, all of the campaign promises you find for this guy are bizarre, and the competition, uh, they make bizarre claims about him, like that he kills cats. Like, what kind of monster is this guy? Another low-life freak in this miserable town, I guess. So when you go to the optional campaign, campaign rally in the town of Watery in chapter 5. I don't know what you're expecting, but it's not this. It's a dog. The mayor of Bright Falls is a dog. You can pet him. Oh. Hello, Mayor Setter. Nice to meet you. And he will even give you a special charm as a reward. This is the kind of wholesome nonsense you'd expect for Bright Falls back when the town wasn't in full Twin Peaks Season 3 mode. It's just a happy little dog mayor you can pet in the middle of this dark horror story. I'd say Remedy is probably the only developer that can pull this off, but they're also the only ones that would even consider putting in something as ridiculous as the mayor actually being a dog. Like, seriously, up until the point in the game where you could pet the dog and find out that that it's the mayor. I assumed that these campaign signs were for like a mayor that was named something like a dog and that the slogans were taking advantage of the fact that his name was similar to that of a breed of dog. Not so. It is that the mayor is in fact a canine. So there you go. Good boy, Remedy. And number six is Starfield. It's a small little Easter egg, but it's pretty touching. It's found in the eye, the station right outside New Atlantis. You know, the place where you talk to Vlad and he gives you the new anomaly coordinates. If you take a right in this place, you can find this little note that might seem meaningless, but it means a lot to the Starfield community. It's a simple note written by Alex Hay that has some positive words of encouragement. If you don't know, Alex Hay was a member of the Starfield subreddit who unfortunately passed away due to cancer before the game came out. Even though they didn't get a chance to play the final game, their name and message will not be forgotten. It's a simple but very wholesome message for someone whose life was cut short before their time, and you gotta respect Bethesda for making a small gesture in their honor. And number five is Kirby Star Allies. You know, Kirby games may look wholesome on the surface, but what exactly is going on with these things? These are not wholesome games. This pink freak is sucking enemies up, stealing their powers, which is, I mean, usually pretty violent. A and then he uses them to kill their friends. Like he's basically a xenomorph that's more terrifying because he's not just killing you, he's killing you and taking all of your skills and abilities and then using them to kill your friends. I, I know, I I'm being a little dramatic here. I get it, these games are for kids are about as harmless as games get but even knowing that i can't help but find this little secret in kirby star allies particularly wholesome a new mechanic in this game is that you can throw a heart and make an enemy into a friend it's how the multiplayer system works but did you know it also works on bosses the timing is tight but if you throw a star at a boss like wispy woods then instead of ending the fight looking beat up and miserable he'll smile and drop a bunch of fruit on you as a reward it's just actually pretty cute that you can actually in the fight with the boss on your side and happy. Most of the time that isn't an option, but in Star Allies you can do it and it's just wholesome as hell. At number four is a birthday surprise in Metal Gear Solid 5. This is a series that is often weird, dark, and very cerebral, on top of being rock stupid at times, but it's almost never wholesome. I mean, this is a series that loves its butts and boobs. Let's, let's not even beat around the bush with that. A and there's some uplifting moments, but I, I usually wouldn't describe them as wholesome. No, JD, stop! <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 5 is the most alienating and intentionally unpleasant game in the series, and yet it somehow manages to have one of the most purely heartwarming moments in a game I have ever seen. Boot the game up on whatever date you picked for your birthday at the start, and you'll get this elaborate cutscene where you return to Mother Base, and all your mercenary buddies show up to surprise you with a song, a birthday cake, and best of all, a cigar. Not that smoking is good, and this is a virtual cigar and you're not really smoking it. Happy birthday! 
it's just jarring though that all these characters just do something nice and enjoy a celebration together. Not something I'd ever just assume would happen from playing the game. From the description, you'd think this'd be over in like a minute, but it's a surprisingly long cutscene that really digs deep into birthday merriment. It's almost a little weird how anyone talks, but that's just this game in general. It's kind of like opposite world Metal Gear Solid. Uh, normally everyone just can't shut up, but in this game, you kind of wish they'd have more to say. Anyway, I'm getting off topic, but this is a cool little Easter egg that's very wholesome in a particularly odd sort of way. And number three is Horizon Forbidden West on an island overlooking the remains of San Francisco. You can find this unique spot where you can sit down and read a note dedicated to a beloved friend. It is a touching moment with a level of production beyond what you would normally expect for an in-game memorial. But reading the note, you can clearly tell it's not relating to something in the game. It's about someone in particular. The note's written to honor Patrick Munich, the lead producer from Guerrilla Games, who unfortunately passed away back in 2019. He'd been a driver force at the developer and was one of the leads on the original Horizon game. You can tell from the tribute the guy meant a lot to the people who worked on the game, and the visuals of the bay combined with the swelling music makes it a contemplative moment. On stone as strong as his spirit, he was not just our rock, he was our oak, sturdy and stoic, whose presence brought us comfort and whose branches touched us all. Rest in peace. And number two is Resident Evil 6. Most of these wholesome moments have been touching or heartfelt, but something doesn't have to be emotionally mature to be wholesome. Sometimes it has to just be what it is, and this Easter egg in Resident Evil 6 is so goofy, but so wholesome in such a bizarre way. Uh, early on in Chapter 3 of Chris's campaign, you can find this playground equipment, and most players would assume this stuff was just for show and just keep moving, because seriously, it's a Resident Evil game. Why would you expect it to be any different? Uh, but in this one instance, the game lets you just cut loose. You can go down the slide and ride on the panda toy, and yeah, it's really goofy looking. Chris Redfield, the ultimate military action man, playing on a children's jungle gym in the middle of a mission. Of course, it's also a reference to Resident Evil 4, where Leon can sit on a chair uh, when Chris rides the panda. He, he does the sitting pose just before getting up, uh, so it's somehow even more ridiculous. Even though it's completely out of place, there's still something truly wholesome about a muscle man playing on a kid's playground. I didn't even really think Chris was capable of feeling happiness at this point, but look at him. This man is living his best life and loving it. And finally, at number one is Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Uh, this is a complex Easter egg, and it's so arbitrary and difficult to find that it was apparently not meant to be found by regular players. But where there is a will, there's a way. And somehow people managed to figure this one out and find the extremely wholesome secret hiding behind it. The specifics of unlocking this Easter egg aren't that important, other than to emphasize just how hidden it was. Uh, like, seriously, there's ridiculous steps like that involve building up barriers two at a time, buying a certain gun, building building up barriers again, buying a different gun, racing to a specific spot, blah, blah, blah. If you do that right, and, and that is a huge if, might I add, uh, then this charmingly simplistic Easter egg will appear. It's a heart with a picture of Treyarch designer Drew Marlowe's family in the middle. That's it. And you know what? It's not even a memorial. Nobody's dead. It's just a cute little thing that designer snuck in to show how much he loves his family. If that is not wholesome, I don't know what is. I do have a quick bonus for you as well uh, with Marvel Spider-Man 2. I, I mentioned Ragnarok and Forbidden West. Feel wrong to leave out the memorial Insomniac left to their fallen technical artist, Craig Goodman. You can visit the memorial in Central Park, uh, and while there's nothing nearby that makes it clear who it is, people like at OctopusYT have chimed in to explain this portrait is in fact Craig Goodman. This touching tribute doesn't draw attention to itself, but this guy has been with Insomniac for 15 years and contributed to the first Ratchet and Clank game all the way up to the first Marvel Spider-Man game. Uh, so he was a really important part in making the studio what it is today. And again, clearly these people matter to the people at these studios. And it's, I mean, it's not nice to see that somebody past. Of course, these folks are, are, are gone way before their time, but it, it is nice to see how much people care for other people. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.